In this video, we're going over how to use the LG Stylo 6 for beginners. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today. If you want to stay up to date on all the mobile technology coming out and learn cool tips, tricks, and hidden features, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and tap the bell to turn on post notifications so you can be alerted every time we post new videos. Today we're gonna to walk you through how to use the LG Stylo 6, and this is a beginner tutorial, so if you're new to smartphones or specifically new to this smartphone, we're gonna walk you through just about everything you need to know to use this phone. Let's go ahead and jump right in. So we always like to start with going over the physical buttons on the outside, so um, on the left side of the phone you will find a volume up and volume down buttons to control the volume and you will find a voice assistant button. So tapping this will launch a Google Assistant that will allow you to use your voice to communicate with the phone. On the right side, you have the power button. By just pressing it uh, quickly, it turns the phone uh, from sleep to on. And if you hold down on the button, then it will take you to a setting to power off the phone or power off and restart. So that's how you would turn the phone on and off. Now this is the lock screen right here, and if you want to get into the phone, at the bottom here it says swipe to unlock. Just put your finger at the bottom here and just swipe, just like that. Just drag it right across the screen, and that will take you right into the phone. On the back of the phone you will find a fingerprint scanner, and you can program this in the settings, and I'll, I'll go over that a little bit later in the video of where you would go to do that. The bottom of the phone you will find a headphone jack to plug in your headphones. This is the charging port. For charging the phone you should find your charging cable in the box. And here is your stylus pen that you can use to navigate and control the screen as well. When you take it out this menu will come up and give you some cool options to work with. And then on the left side of the phone as well you will find your SIM tray. So if you do want to put in a memory card from a previous phone or a new memory card, you'll just use the little SIM tool that comes in the box, pop this out, and then put your SIM card in, then plug it back in, and that's how you can expand your storage. Okay, so now we're on the main screen, and we're gonna walk you through how to navigate the phone. Um, now, one thing you'll notice, if you've used an Android phone before, there are no buttons at the bottom of the screen. So this phone comes in what is called the gesture mode, and in gesture mode you use gestures to navigate the screen. I'm gonna show you quickly how the gestures work, and then I will show you how to switch the phone to the traditional button layout if you feel more comfortable using the phone that way. So quickly to use the navigation um, with this little bar here, um, Let's start by going to an app. So we're gonna go to Google Chrome. And if I wanted to go back to my main screen, I would simply just swipe up from the bottom quickly. And that would take me back to my home screen. So that gesture of just swiping up is what always will take you back to your main screen, okay? Now, if you wanna to get to all the apps that are running on your phone, you would need to uh, take your finger and drag it up, but keep it on the screen for a few seconds and that will take you to your recent apps just like this, so just drag up and hold, and now I can see my recent apps that are running on the phone. Okay, and I'm gonna swipe up again to go home. So there's that. So now what if I want to use my back button, because normally there is a back button at the bottom of the screen here. So to get that back button, you would need to, well let's, I'm gonna take you to settings first, and don't worry, I'll I we'll go back here later and I'll show you how to get there. Um, but let's say I'm in the settings and I tap on uh, lock screen and security. If I wanna go back one step, I would have to take my finger and drag it to the right of the screen. So I'm on the left side, but I'm basically dragging from the edge to the inside, and that's how you go back one step. It's just a drag of the screen. Let me show you that one more time because it is new to some people, so I wanna make sure you understand it. So if I want to go back one step, I'm just dragging from the edge to the right, basically onto the screen, and that takes you back a step. If you say to yourself, I don't like this gesture stuff, I want the traditional buttons, here's how you get that back. So we're gonna to go to our settings, and to get to the settings, you'll need to swipe down from the top of the screen. And in the upper right corner, click on this little wheel right here, and go to display right down here and then tap on navigation bar. And you'll need to switch from gestures to buttons only. Okay, now we are in the 
traditional look, we have a home button, a recent apps button, and a back button. So uh, what a lot of people are a little more used to and comfortable with, that's what you will have. And all those work the same. Recent apps will show you the apps that are running on the phone. The home button always will take you back to your main screen. So just tap that little circle and I'm back home. And the back button will take you back one step from whatever you were on previously. So this is essentially how you navigate the phone using these three buttons down here. Now moving on, we're gonna walk you through what is called the notification panel. Now just swiping down from the top of the screen. So again, at the very top, you see where the camera is or anywhere at the top, just take your finger and just swipe down. And this will take you to what is called the um, notification panel. This is how all of your apps communicate with you on the phone. As a new message comes through, it will show up in this section. Let's say you have a text message come through. You just swipe down from the top and you can see the message in these notifications. Um, anything you download, uh, you'll always see that the messages pop up in this section. So always check for this. And if you see something and you're like, okay, cool, I wanna get rid of it, you just swipe to the right and that's how you get rid of it just like that. Even right here, it says I have a new voicemail. I can just tap on this and it will automatically take me to either my voicemail app or it will call my voicemail so that I can check my messages. So you always wanna be checking uh, in this section to see if you have any new messages. Now, at the top of the screen here, you have what are called your switches. Now these switches help you to control different functions on the phone and the most important uh, switches are gonna be on the main screen, but if you swipe down again a second time, you'll see you have even more switches. Let me show you that one more time just so you understand. If I swipe down, I have these first six, and then I'm gonna swipe again, and now I have more. And if I swipe to the left, I have a few more here as well. So this is location, which is for GPS. You have do not disturb, so if you're going into a meeting or a room where you don't want your phone to go off, you can tap that and nothing will come through. Your battery saver mode. Now, I'm gonna show you how these switches work. I'm just gonna demonstrate one for you, and I'm gonna show you how to connect to Wi-Fi. So, this is my Wi-Fi switch. I can simply use this to turn Wi-Fi on and off. So right now, you notice it's not blue. That means that the Wi-Fi is turned off. So if I wanna turn on Wi-Fi and connect to a Wi-Fi network, I just simply have to tap that little button there. And then now I know Wi-Fi is on. And if I wanna to connect to a Wi-Fi network, I'm gonna hold down on the button. Now, normally just turning it on will automatically take you to this screen. But if instead of just turning it on, if I just take my finger and just put it on the button, Hold for one second, it'll take me to the Wi-Fi settings menu, which is a little more extensive than what popped up on the screen initially. Okay, so I'm gonna to connect to Wi-Fi. I need to look for the network that I wanna to connect to. Let's say you're at Starbucks, you would look for Starbucks in this menu, and you would tap on it. I'm gonna to connect to Netgear in this case. And then you would need to enter the password. Your keyboard will pop up, and you'll type in the code, hit connect, and then that fast, you'll be on Wi-Fi. Let's go ahead and put our code in so we can get into Wi-Fi. All right, so I just put my code in. I'm now connected and you'll see it'll say connected. And you'll also see this little Wi-Fi symbol in the corner. And that's how you know you are successfully connected to a Wi-Fi network. So perfect, there's that. So that's how these switches work. You just simply hold down on it for one second. It'll take you to that menu and then you can turn that switch on and off. Uh, same thing with Bluetooth. If you wanted to connect to Bluetooth headphones, you would just simply take your finger, hold down on the button. It'll take you to that setting. You would turn it on and then look for the device you're trying to connect to in this list below. Tap it and then um, you'd be connected. So that is the navigation panel. Now next I want to go over hey, where are my apps? If I downloaded a new app, where do I find it? Or how about how do I download an app? Let's talk about that. So um, the way the Stylo 6 is initially set up, um, there is no app drawer. For those of you that are, have used older Android phones before, there used to be a little button in the corner that you would tap right here. And that button would take you to a screen that shows all the apps on the phone. Well, 
Uh, the way it's set up now is that button is not there. So all your apps are gonna be spread out across these two pages. So you'll have to check in all these folders for the various apps. Now, if you say to yourself, I really like that button, I don't like them all being on the home screen, I'm gonna show you how to get that button back. We simply would hold down on the screen for one second. Now this is on the home screen and come down to home screen settings down here. The very top where it says select home, tap here. And then we're gonna tap home and app drawer and then tap okay. You'll notice your phone is gonna do a little bit of a flicker and the layout will change. And now we have an app drawer button. And if we tap this, you'll see all your apps organized on one page. And whenever you download a new app, they'll always show up on this page. So it just makes it easier for you to find things. You don't have to check through all these folders. You'll just see them all at a quick glance view. There are folders on this page. So your Metro by T-Mobile folder is still there. Your Google folder is still there. All that is the same. But uh, as you download new apps, they're all gonna be in this separate section. So that is um, how we get to our apps. Now next we're gonna go over how to download apps. If you're new to this process and you don't really understand where you get the apps from, you go to what is called the Play Store. You tap on the Play Store. Now, before you can actually download an app, you will need to sign in with a Google account. And that could be a Gmail account or a Google account. Um, basically, we're gonna go to sign in. And here we'll need to enter our Gmail email address and our password. Now there are some cases where people will have a Google account that is not an at Gmail. If you have a Google account and you know you have one for sure, you just type it in here in the password and you're done. If you don't have a Gmail or a Google account, that's fine. You simply would just tap create account and then you can set up a Google account really quickly that will allow you to then download apps on your phone. I'm gonna enter my Gmail account and then we will move forward to downloading apps. Okay, so I successfully entered my email address and password. It's gonna ask me if I agree to the terms, I do. And now it's gonna take me to this screen. We're gonna hit accept as well. And then it will take us to the Google Play Store. Now think of the Play Store as this is your one-stop shop to download anything and everything you would need for your phone. So here you can get games, apps, movies and TV shows, and books. Um, you can also get music too, but it's funny it doesn't show up as an option down there. But anything you would want, you would just search it in this section up here, and then you can download it. Now I'll show you really quickly how to download an app. So let's say you wanted to download a Solitaire app. You could simply just type in Solitaire, and it'll begin to recommend some options, and just tap on one like I just did. And we'll download this one here. So tap on that app. If this button says install, that's how you know it's a free app. If you see a price here, that means that it's not free and you may wanna think twice, unless you absolutely want that one, then you'll have to pay for it. We're gonna tap on this green install button and then it will begin to download that uh, game or app. Now just to preface, app is short for application. So think of apps as like programs on a computer Computers have programs, phones have apps. So just in case you didn't know. So anyway, uh, this is a solitaire game and we're just gonna open it. Now, when you see the op open button, it just means that it's downloaded, that's it. So I can open it from here or I can go home and it should show up on one of these pages. If it doesn't, that's fine. You just tap on your apps button and you'll see that your new solitaire game has downloaded and it's right here and I can tap on it, and that easy I can begin playing my new solitaire game. So that's it. The last thing I wanna show you is how to set up your fingerprint scanner so you can unlock your phone with your finger. We're gonna go back to the settings and that's going to the upper right corner, swiping down and tapping on the wheel. And let's go to the lock screen and security section and go down to fingerprints, tap next. And before you would program your fingerprint, you will need to set up a backup PIN.
pin or password just to be able to enter in the event that it's not accepting your fingerprint. In some cases, the fingerprint scanner gets damaged and you have to have another way to sign into the phone. We're gonna do a pin and just make the pin 0000. Next, 0000. Okay, so now our pin is set up. And then, so it's asking you here, uh, since you're gonna set up a password for the phone, do you want to hide important information from your lock screen or show it? I just leave this to whatever it's already set. Press okay. And now you're gonna take your phone, flip it over and just tap here and it will begin to program your fingerprint into the phone so you can easily unlock it. And I'm taking my finger and I'm kind of moving it around the button just so that it will read my entire fingerprint. And we are all set. And if you hit add more, you can program more fingers, which I do highly recommend. Now, if you wanna learn more, so I tried to go over a lot of the basics Okay, the next thing I'm gonna go over, this is the last thing, is uh, making calls and sending text messages. Now you'll see at the bottom here, all your important apps are gonna be at the bottom. So actually quickly, let me go over these. So first, your camera is down here. You can simply tap on the camera icon to get to the camera and take pictures. You can tap on this, this is your gallery. This will show you your pictures after you take them right here. This is your text message app where you can just uh, open it, enter a phone number. In fact, we'll show you. You'll tap on the green button and you'll type in the phone number of the person you want to text. So 323-853-1212. And then uh, tap enter message. And here you can then enter what you wanna say, hi. Hit the green button to send it and that will send the message, and that's it. To make a call, you would go to the call button here, and you're on the dialer, you'll just simply type in the number, and then hit the green button here, and it will begin to make the call for you. So that is how to make a phone call. Now, I hope you guys found the video helpful. If you wanna learn more, so I tried to go over a lot of the basics. If you wanna take your knowledge to the next level and learn cool tips and tricks, and also hidden features, check out this video here and this video here. Hope you guys found the video helpful. Make sure you like, favorite, and share if it was helpful. Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Take care and as always, have a good one.